great to see you all tonight. Thanks for coming out. We've just celebrated Christmas. Does it seem like a long time ago? No? I should tell you, actually, Barbie makes the best Christmas shortbread you've ever tasted. So I'm sorry if I'm giving you more work here, but it is fantastic if you haven't tried it yet. Well, we do many, many different things at Christmas. And Christmas is particularly a time for giving, isn't it? Who likes presents? I like presents. I've got a present here. Don't worry, I didn't. (laughs) Keith said I shouldn't have, and I said I didn't. Um, Now, this is actually a a Christmas gift here that I'm waiting to see someone for. Um, But yeah, and I was thinking about the gifts that we give. And because it's such a focal part of Christmas, even though it was only a few days ago, it made me think about a time not just for giving, but for giving. And Christmas may have come and gone, and some of you will have already done most of your shopping for this Christmas, because I know what some of you are like, and you'll have got some great bargains, and you'll have them all lined up, and you know who you're giving what to. And some of you will be able to tell me how many days there are until Christmas, won't you? Okay, I know some of you will be... But tonight, I just want us to take a few moments to look at the subject of forgiving. And I want to read from Luke chapter 6, from verse 27. And I'll give you a minute to find that. Luke chapter 6. It says here in verse 27, But to you who are listening, I say... Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn them to the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Because even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Because even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Because even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. And we can read in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, that, the, that blessed are the merciful and blessed are the peacemakers. <clears throat> now, I have to say, growing up, I didn't think a lot about forgiveness. It mainly started by uh, when me and my brother would lovingly attack each other and fight, being made to say sorry. Now, I know none of you do that if you've got younger brothers or sisters at home. Um, but sometimes we would have, in fact, fairly regularly we would have a few scuffles and things would happen and I'd be made to apologize do you know what that's like when you're like I'm sorry then and you don't really mean it but you have to apologize because your mum's told you that you have to and that's how it kind of started for me And I have to say that we get on a lot better now, me and my brother. It's it's all good now. And now he's bigger than me and he just picks me up and spins me around if I get too annoying for him. But I have to say that when I became a Christian and I asked Jesus to come and live in my heart, I knew for the first time what it was really like to be forgiven. To have every wrong thing that I had ever thought 
that I'd ever said and I'd ever done just washed completely away. And I remember that night, I can only describe the feeling like I was clean on the inside. And you might think, well, that sounds a bit unusual. And it wasn't that I was feeling dirty beforehand. I just knew that when I prayed that prayer and I said, Jesus, would you come and live in my heart, that something changed in here. And suddenly, I felt so clean. I knew I was forgiven. And I knew that I was loved. And when I was around the age of sort of 18, 19, I had a few issues with... um, with self-image because I was never I was never one of the popular kids growing up in school and I was I was always one of the bigger ones in my class and I never really quite fitted into the in crowd and so I used to get picked on and I remember having these issues at the age of 18 19 thinking well I don't quite look like how I look and this that and the other and I was really praying about this because I love God with all my heart and I wanted to serve him and there was something going on in my mind all the time. And so I prayed about it and you know what God showed me? People from the age of five years old that had said wrong things to me, that had in the playground bullied me in a sense, told me I was all the unkind things that they could have said and I realized that at the age of 18 and 19 all those things I knew that I had to forgive all those people that had wronged me all those years ago now had I gone through my teens thinking oh I'm so this so that thinking about it no it was suddenly an issue and I thought I need to forgive them I realized that I as I had been forgiven I had to forgive those who had done wrong to me And in doing so, I became free on the inside. And that was a really wonderful thing. Because the Bible tells us in Galatians 5 verse 1 that it was for freedom that we were set free. And I had to come into this freedom. And I tell you, the change from going from here to here and being set free was amazing. The power of forgiveness. I had to learn to forgive myself for not seeing myself as God saw me. And if you know your Bibles and you've read Psalm 139, and I would encourage all of you to do it, especially you guys on the back row, it says about God forming us. Before he formed, formed us in our mother's womb, he knew us. And when we know how much God loves us, how much he cares about us, And how if we see how God sees us, it changes our perception. And I had to forgive myself for not seeing me as God saw me. And I'm I'm not talking all all about self-image tonight, but I just wanted to share a few things because testimony is fantastic. Veronica shared tonight. I thought that was so powerful. And I'm a practical person as well, and I like to know how this works. And I'm going to share some practical things for you tonight that um, that I've learned along the way. You know, I'm, I'm always learning. We're on a continual learning curve, aren't we? Sometimes it's really steep. Other times it levels out a bit. But we're all learning all of the time. And in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, it says, Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he can devour. And I had to, and it says that we are to resist him. And I had to decide to not let the devil have a hold over me and my life. 